Hello folks, a very warm welcome. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the beautiful slide guitar part on the new Beatles song, Now and Then. This is a break from our scheduled programming, but of course, when the Beatles release a song in 2023, you have to drop everything, get a haircut, put the t-shirt on, and do your thing. Now our Beatles videos historically are among our worst performing YouTube videos, but as I said, you know, how many times in your lifetime are the Beatles gonna release a song? In my case, this will be the third new Beatles song that I've been alive for. And of course, I didn't have a YouTube channel last time they released one. This is very much not a how to play slide guitar video. I would not claim to be a slide guitar player by any stretch of the imagination, but I can make the noises that would make it appear that I can play slide guitar. But I'm hoping I can give you a couple of tips, maybe if you're new to it, that'll help you sound a little more proficient. If you know what you're doing already, then just sit back and enjoy the beautiful slide guitar work done on this song by Paul McCartney. So from me now, just a couple of tips for you before we actually start looking at the solo on slide guitar basics. And I'm talking about melodic single note slide guitar. The first thing is that a higher action on your guitar is going to be useful to you because if you try and do any kind of slide on a low action guitar it's really not going to work that well and you're sort of just going to be up against it from the word go. The other thing is dynamics in your playing. I think when most people get a slide they just start digging in and really that is exactly the opposite of what you need when you start playing slide. The sooner you can get to grips with how sensitive you have to be to get a good tone out of a slide for this sort of thing the better you'll be. All right, that's the preamble done. Let's take a look at this beautiful slide solo. The first thing to say is that this tutorial covers the middle eight, so the middle section, I think, is after the second chorus, and we'll put the timestamps on the screen, and then the end of the song, the outro, and that's where the two bits of slide are, and I've just rammed them together for this tutorial and for the little performance that comes up at the end. So... <laughs> With slide guitar, we're not gonna learn how to play slide in this video, but a couple of things that made a huge difference to me is, first of all, where you're wearing your slide. Uh, for me, I, you, I do ring finger, uh, left hand, or some people do little finger. You could hold the thing for this kind of uh, solo, but really, you know, the earlier you can get to grips with it on one of those two fingers. Some people have the little slides. Uh, they work fine, I prefer the full finger because there's more to aim at. And the other thing is that I prefer the metal ones. You can get the glass ones as well. Hold up there. You can get the glass ones. I find the metal to be a little more forgiving in the sense that you get less outs. You get less string buzz, all the rest of that. So it just sounds a little more consistent with this guy. Get rid of that. The other thing that I wanted to say is that holding the slide at a slight angle, like so, basically you don't want this kind of thing happening. You know, you don't want the, the thumb to be in front of the guitar and you really, imagine you're trying to do a bar chord, you wouldn't have the finger totally dead straight like that. And it's the same with the slide. The most important thing to say here about getting the pitch of the notes right is that when I say a fret number, that means literally over the fret. So for example, if I said to you right now, play the 10th fret, you'd play the 10th fret there. But if you want to slide at the 10th fret and you want that note to sound like that, what you've got to do is go actually pretty well over the fret wire. I'll show you what I mean. So keep this note in your mind. That's where I have my finger, as you can see. And then I'm just going to put that over the fret wire, you can hear that's now in tune. So that is the bit that most people get wrong. That's the amateur hour mistake with slide is that people try and put it like this in the middle of the fret. And of course, everything, unless you tune the strings up, which you don't want to do, everything's out of tune. Onwards, the song starts on the 10th fret of the B string. Remember, literally the 10th fret. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This guy and we're going to slide into the 10th fret. I should say, this is the middle part of the song, by the way. Now you'll notice I'm just adding a bit of vibrato there. I use these two fingers just to support that. 
and vibrato is on slide. Yeah, it can be. Thank you, Peanut. Vibrato can actually be pretty wild on slide, but that is not the vibe here. We're talking subtlety. The next phrase stays with the B string. In fact, most of, all of, all of the first part of this solo is played on the B string. We're starting on the 13th fret and we're gonna to slide to the 12th. We're gonna pick, slide back to the 12th, pick, and slide back to the 8th. Now, you probably heard some of the other strings ringing out as I, slide, as I slid there. I'll try and show you what I mean. This is just another tip for you. You can hear that. You don't wanna hear that. And the way you do that, if you watch my performance, you'll notice that my hand is just a bit lower than usual. You might find that difficult to begin with. The reason for that is to mute as much as possible the other strings that you're not playing. You can also use your fingers under here to just touch the strings that you're not playing. A lot of the really good guys will mute back behind the slide. Um, you can hear the other note that you don't want there. It's up to you how you do it. Just try and get it as clean as possible. I would say in the context of a mix, if you're playing this, or even in a live show, if you're playing this sort of stuff, you get away with the odd little note like that. It's fine. That phrase again. 13, 12, and down to eight, but you don't play eight. The next phrase starts on the fifth fret, and we're gonna pick fifth. Slide up to eight. And we're not gonna pick eight. We're gonna slide straight through it and pick 10. The next phrase, we're still on the B string, is really similar to the one before the one we just did. And I'll just play it to you. So you can see there, I'm sliding 13 to 12. Get it in tune. Down to eight, slide to five, and pick five as you land on it. So that again, right, you've got to pick that last note. That's tricky, because you've got to make sure you're over the right note as you get to it. Let me show you what I mean. Better. The next little bit, we're still on the B string, very subtle slide seven-ish. You decide where, into eight. That's it. Next little bit, we're gonna go five, eight, and then 10, and you've gotta pick each one of these notes, if, as if you can believe that. Watch this. And I think on mine, I added a little extra flavor, something like this. Which is very, very kind of Beatles-y. I'm not sure if that's on the track, but I like doing that sort of stuff. So you slide in, pick, slide, and you get to it and then you sort of almost reaffirm that last note with a mini slide, it's like just the fret behind, let me show you that. The next part is very easy. You just go slide eight to 10 and you hold it. The next little bit is the last phrase of the middle section it goes, And that is the end of it. And then we're into the last verse. I'll just show you what that last phrase is. We go seven to 10 on the B string. Pick 10. Again, if you wanted to go, just sort of replay that note with a bit of a slide into it. Slide down to eight, play eight, and slide to five for beat one of the last verse, but don't play it or do play it. It's your choice. All right, so moving swiftly on to the outro, much easier in many ways. It's basically one phrase, but perhaps the fiddliest bit of the whole piece, at the end of the song, they just chuck in a couple of little three, four bars, because they're the Beatles, and it sounds awesome, and the slide guitar follows that change in the time signature. We hit the A minor chord at the start of that, and we go one, two, three, four, one. And that is the phrase, really. It does that again. 
So you're doing that twice. I'll show you exactly what it is. You want to be on nine on the G string this time. We go to seven. Then back to nine and you're going to go down to four. So watch this. So beautiful that. Love that bit. And then this bit is just, it gets me every time. Up to that D on the seventh fret. So I'll play the whole thing of those two phrases together. One, two, three, four, one. And then we get to the cheeky bit and it took me a little, it took me a few goes to get this, I'm not going to lie, but the easiest way to do this last bit, in my opinion, is to practice it with the track. You know, I could sit here and try and count it out with you via YouTube, but that would be a bit silly. Listen to the track, use your ears and I'll show you what it does. We do the little slide, but because we're in 3-4, they're closer together now, so it's, it's actually a little harder because it's quicker. And then you've got that little tag on the end to finish it. It follows the strings, the beautiful string arrangement on this track. And that is the ninth fret to the seventh, ninth fret to the fourth, all on the G string, fourth to the second, second to the first, and then back up to the second for the very last chord of the song. I've got a backing track for this song just an acoustic back and track, which I think is a fantastic way to practice this sort of thing. You can really concentrate on the sound of your playing. So if you want the back and track, obviously let me know in the comments. So there you go. That was the slide solo from now and then. I really hope you enjoyed that and I hope you had as much fun as I did when I learned it. I say fun. I actually found it quite stressful to get it right. But we won't go into that right now. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Consider giving the video a thumbs up because it does help us and we are back for good now in the words of Gary Barlow. So stick with us. More next Friday. We'll see you then.